Okay, and this is examples part three. So example four says find the indefinite integral and it has two terms. So we're gonna go ahead and integrate these. Now three is just a constant multiplier. And according to our integration rules, the antiderivative of cosine is sine x. Minus two, and the antiderivative of sine x is negative cosine x. And because I've taken the antiderivative of each term, I do have to put the constant of integration. So if I multiply my coefficients in, I end up with positive two cosine x plus c. And that is the integral of part A. Now, part B, they're changing things up a little bit. Notice that my variables are thetas now, and here I am integrating with respect to theta. So just like we integrated with respect to y, it just means that instead of writing x's in our rules of integration, we write whatever variable they have. So the, I'm gonna do the power rule just like I did before, except my variable stays theta. If I add one, I have to divide by my new power. Three is my constant multiplier. The integral of e to the x, or e to the theta, is the same, e to the theta. And then the integral of secant squared is tangent theta. And then my constant of integration. I just want to double check because when it comes to um, our sines and cosines and all of that stuff, sometimes it's real easy to get them um, backwards. So let's see. We're going, we're doing secant squared, the integral of secant squared, and that is tangent. Okay, so we're good there. Now, Now this page that I have here is usually like the inside of the cover of the books if you have the paper books. But if you have the um, ebook, you can view this page inside the ebook. It's one of the, um, it'll either be in the appendix or it'll be one of the first things before the table of contents. Um, and you can print it or you can just write everything down. Um, if you're using the video, you can, um, just screenshot this and then write it down on your own if you need to have it for your sheet. But it goes over all the basic rules for um, differentiation and it includes all of the chain rules. So notice that if you have a u, it's u prime, cosine of u, whatever that u is. If it's 2x, you put 2x here, but then you take the derivative of 2x. So it has all the chain rules already all in it. And then you have your um, basic integration formulas down here. Now we haven't gone into all of these, um, but we have gone into some of them so far. Later, eventually, as we keep going through the chapter, um, you will get to some of these. In Cal 1, maybe not not there yet, but in Cal 2, you will definitely get this far, okay? Um, and then I think I've used this in one of the Cal 1 videos when solving trigonomic equations. I refer to my um, unit circle here. Um, but there's all kinds of information. All of your trig identities are on here if we ever need them while we're solving our um, equations. We've got them there. Um, so this is just a nice little tool that I use whenever I'm working on my calculus problems. And like I said, you can get a copy of it inside your ebook or you can screenshot this and get it from here now, okay? Now example five says find the indefinite integral. So here we have two terms, but notice that it's in one fraction. So the first thing we wanna do is separate this so that we have x squared over x plus two over x. Now because it's two terms, I do need to put my um, parentheses around it. Whereas here, it's just one big fat fraction, so I didn't need the parentheses around it. But now I've got two separate fractions that I still need to integrate, um, so I have to have it like that. Now, if I simplify this, so these are equivalent to the line before it, right? That's the important significance of why I'm talking about it. Um, so if I reduce this, I'll get just x to the one power, and here I get x two to the negative one power. So now I can apply my um, rules. Actually, this one cannot be applied, the um, 
the power rule because when I add one I'm going to get zero and you can't divide by zero so you have to remember this integration rule that said if you have the integral of 1 over x it's ln of the absolute value of x plus c another way of looking at that integral rule is x to the negative 1 is ln of x plus c okay and you do have to have the absolute value bars because you have to guarantee that that argument is positive which allows you to talk about a, no a natural logarithm um, so here when I integrate this the integral of x is x squared over 2 I'm going to keep my constant multiplier of a 2 and the integral of this term is going to be ln of the absolute value of x now because I did apply my rules to each term I do have to put my constant of integration now this does not simplify so therefore this is my final answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here's where things start to get a little bit interesting. So example six says, find the particular solution that satisfies the differential equation, this, and the initial condition, this. So what this means is that notice how every single time we've been finding the general solution, we've been putting this plus C, which says that's the antiderivative, but if I put a plus C, this is all the antiderivatives. Well, now what they want is they don't want you to find the general solution. They want you to find what's called a particular solution. So what you need to know is what is that C value exactly, okay? So this is the general solution, but they want to know what's the specific particular solution. And that is when you use these values here to find out what that C is, okay? So your answer will be the antiderivative, but with an actual number here, like five or negative four, some number that will go here, one half, okay? Whatever it might be. So let's go ahead and do the integral of this problem. So the integral of f prime of x dx and the integral of 4x dx. Remember, derivatives, derivatives and integrals are opposite of each other. So when you have both of them, they inverse each other, so you end up with the original function f of x. Over here, I have a constant multiplier, and then I'm going to raise, it, add one to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. And then, of course, because I did the integral, I'm going to have a plus c. Now remember, when we're integrating both sides of the equation, you do not need to put plus c on both sides because this c will eventually move over here, making it one big fat c, okay? So let's simplify this a little bit. We get 2x squared plus c. Now is where this information is going to come in handy to find that value c. So my final answer will be f of x equals 2x squared, I just don't know what particular constant is going to go here, okay? And that's what I'm about to find out using this information here. Remember, this is an x value inside the parentheses, and f of an x value is a y value, so that is a y value, which means this is my y value, that is going to become 18, and my x value is going to become a 2. So I get 18 equal, 2 times 2 is 4, and this 4 times that 2 is 8. And if I minus 8 on both sides, I end up with 10 equaling C. So that means that that constant here should be a positive 10. And this is the particular solution to this differential equation with this information this and this information is called an initial condition okay